how can I stop my kid from waking up in the middle of the night? This is probably the most common question that I get asked. I'm gonna show you the three mistakes that actually cause overnight wake-ups and how they are totally solvable. Overnight wake-ups are one of the most frustrating issues with bigger kids because it's tough to know what to do. I mean, you wanna get your kid back to bed as quickly as possible, but you definitely want to avoid a full-on meltdown at 2 a.m. that's going to wake everybody in the house up. And you may want to avoid jumping into bed with your kid or pulling them into your bed, but sometimes that seems like it might be the only option. So what are we supposed to do? The good news here is that stopping these wake-ups is 100% within your control. Once you understand what's causing the wake-ups, you're going to see how to make them stop. There are three mistakes that we parents are making that are accidentally encouraging the wake-ups. That's right, we're unknowingly making these wake-ups worse. Let me show you what I mean. The first mistake you might be making is that your child is too dependent on you at bedtime. So I want you to think about everything in your child's room, everything in their sleep environment when they're falling asleep. Do they have a nightlight? Do they have a white noise machine? Do they have a fan? Do they have blackout curtains? Is the door opened or closed? Do they have a lovey? Do they have you sitting in the room with them or laying in the bed with them? Kids are going to sleep consistently through the night without waking up when nothing in their sleep environment changes. So you don't want that night light to go off. You don't want that sound machine to turn off and you don't want a person to go missing. That's you because when your kiddo moves into like a later stage of sleep, their body can sense when something in the room is different. Something has changed from when they fell asleep or a person is missing that can actually cause your kiddo to wake up. You may have seen this if your kiddo's lovey falls on the floor in the middle of the night. You know, maybe they're still asleep, they kind of reach out for their lovey, but they can't find it. Well, that makes them wake up and then they have to figure out where it is. Maybe they have to come find you and then they realize, oh, it's fallen on the floor. I've even seen kids wake up if they fall asleep with like their door cracked and then parents close the door before they go to bed. That can actually cause kids to wake up. And if your child is used to you sitting in their room or laying with them when they fall asleep and then you go missing, that can definitely cause their body to wake up and have to come find you again at two in the morning. In fact, this is the biggest cause of overnight wake-ups because by staying in their room at bedtime, you're making yourself an important part of their sleep process, just like their lovey or their passy or their sound machine. So how do you fix this? Well, you've got to encourage your child to fall asleep independently at bedtime. That's the only way that their sleep environment isn't gonna change all through the night unless of course you wanna sleep in there with them. When kids can fall asleep alone at bedtime, they can stay asleep alone through the night and they don't have to come find you at 2 a.m. There are many different ways to encourage sleep independence. There are gradual strategies. There are kind of quicker, more rip the bandaid off methods. And what's gonna be right for you really depends on your family, your parenting style, how long the dependence has gone on for, maybe things that you've tried in the past. I actually teach a free class called The Proven Method to Get Your Child to Fall Asleep Alone. If you'd like to join the class, you can save your spot at toddlersleepmasterclass.com. The second mistake that you might be making is that something pretty great is happening during the wake up. So I want you to think about what's happening when your kiddo wakes up in the middle of the night. How are you responding? And what kind of benefit or reward could the child feel like they're getting for that wake up? Do you let them sleep in your bed for the rest of the night? Or do you go back to their room and sleep with them? Do they get tons of hug hugs and snuggles and retuck-ins? Do they get a snack? And it could be something so tiny, 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 tiny. I've seen kids keep waking up because a parent just comes and simply pulls their covers up or a parent simply gives them a kiss on the forehead. It could be something very tiny. So I want you to put on your detective hat and see if you can figure out what benefit your child might be getting from these wake-ups. So this favorable interaction can actually cause your kids to wake up. Yep, kids are such creatures of habit that if there's any little reward or benefit going on at these middle of the night wake-ups, it can actually keep the wake-ups going. So you may have seen this if your kiddo was in a crib and they ever played the throw the passy out of the crib game. That really keeps parents coming back more and more and more. So it's just a learned behavior. It's just a habit. So how do you fix this? Well, breaking a habit or changing a habit can be as simple as just doing something different and responding in a less favorable way. So change something up. 
For example, if you're pulling your kiddos into your bed in the middle of the night, just walk them back to their room. If they always want mom, maybe they get dad for a while. If you're stuck in the pulling up the covers game, then during the day, have like a little race with your kiddo to see how fast they can fix their own covers. That just helps to show you and them that they can do it on their own. The third mistake that you might be making is that you're being inconsistent. Like I said, kids are such creatures of habit and habits can start very quickly. Like you give them dessert one night, now they're expecting it every single night. Or you let them take their shoes off at the playground one day and now they're trying to live their entire life barefoot. And the same thing goes with sleep behaviors. If you sometimes rub their back in order for them to fall asleep, they're gonna quickly expect that you're gonna do that every night. If you sometimes let them sleep with you when they wake up in the middle of the night, you're gonna start seeing them at 3 a.m. much more frequently. I see this happen in a lot of families where they let their kids crawl into bed with them when it's close to the morning. It's five o'clock, okay, it's close enough to wake up time. They can come into my bed and snuggle for a little while longer. But the problem here is that kids have no sense of time. So they don't know when it's okay to come into your bed and when it may not be okay to come into your bed. So you start seeing them wake up earlier and earlier and earlier trying to get in there. So you really have to look at this from your child's perspective. I also see a lot of inconsistency between parents. So, you know, if mom and dad aren't on the same page and dad's doing things one way and mom's doing things another way, whichever parent is doing things the more favorable way for the child, they're going to expect both parents to do it that way. That plays into a lot of the parental preference issues that we, that we struggle with. And also it can cause trouble, you know, between the parents when they're not on the same page. And this is especially true of overnight wakeups where, you know, parents were exhausted and it's 2 a.m. and you just want everyone to go back to sleep. You don't really care what happens. So let's say that dad is okay to go, you know, sleep in Timmy's room with him. And then the next night, if mom wakes up with Timmy, he's going to expect mom to go sleep in the room with him. And it makes it really, really tough for mom to respond in a different way. And when kids are getting a favorable response to these wakeups, the wakeups keep happening. So how do you fix this? Well, parents really have to get on the same page about what the sleep rules are in their house and how overnight wakeups are going to be handled so they both can be responding in the same way. If not, it's just too confusing for your child. Doing things sometimes is just too tough for kids. So the more consistent you can be about setting up the sleep environment that you want for your family, the easier it is for your kids to get used to it. If you're thinking that it could be like a nightmare or a night terror that's waking your kid up in the middle of the night, check out this video.